All right, so I've been building a model balloon uh, over the last couple of months. It's a completely different design to anything that I've built before. So really excited this evening to get it out and test inflate it and see what it looks like. Um, it's a design which comes apart and you can change the color scheme around, put it back together. Um, you can also change the size and the shape of the balloon by taking parts away from it and adding them in um, for the next time you inflate it. So we'll see how that works. Bit of a laugh really and see whether it's any good. Back in the depths of winter, I sat down and took a look at some of my old notes on envelope design, uh, having been challenged by a few people who said that there's nothing new that can be done with hot air balloon envelope design. I decided I wanted to pull together as many different design features as I could of systems and shapes of balloons that I'd not built before. So this balloon has particularly large curves, for example, in its structure and I'll come to how they were constructed a little bit later on. One of the key features that I decided to build into the balloon is to have each of the vertical sections attached to the next one simply by velcro. This caused a few raise eyebrows amongst uh, the community with people saying it won't work, it can't possibly be done or it will simply fall apart when you put hot air inside it. So arriving on the launch field we have to assemble the balloon because it's in four distinct parts then we can pump some cold air inside. As the balloon inflates, we can see here the boundary between the white and the red section of the balloon is where the Velcro is running. And of course at this stage, I don't actually know whether this is going to work or whether the whole thing is going to get pressurised and just tear apart. So the next key feature that I wanted to include in my design uh, was four very distinct, very curved sections of balloon running from the top of the balloon to the bottom. These are known as gores, and traditionally man-carrying balloons are created in groups of uh, 8, 12, 16, 24, even 32. Well, certainly is a balloon. It's definitely got a different shape to it. Four massively bulbous gores. And looking at the balloon from the outside, we can see just how big that super billow has become on this four gore balloon. If we take a very quick look then up inside the balloon as the hot air is introduced we can see the very clear definition between the red and the white slash black sections of the balloon. These are the four distinct gores. Having decided then that I was going to produce a balloon with massive curvature in it I had to go back to the basics and try to understand again how I was going to design the panels. We can see here a top-down view of the cutting process on my cutting table. Each panel was cut individually, rather than being grouped together and cut en masse. And that's because there was such a low number of panels of each type in this balloon. There were uh, left-hand and right-hand versions of the same curvature, but there were only a relatively small number. After the panel has been cut, it must be assembled to the adjacent panel at the same height up the envelope. Each panel has a vertical straight edge to it, and so construction at this stage is relatively easy. Panels at the top of the balloon and panels at the bottom of the balloon are very curved, and we can see from this group of images, they flatten out as they reach the centre of the balloon. And looking up the outside of the balloon, we can see that curvature as it's formed and those vertical seams as they separate one panel from the next in each of the horizontal rows. So the next design feature that I was interested in incorporating in the construction was what's referred to as lens and strap envelope design. So I've included a couple of images here. On the left a Cameron concept and on the right a Thundercolt bullet which I took as a reference point for my ideas. And if we look at the black and white gore in particular it highlights this lens and strap philosophy. So as we continue through the video, well, we continue to stack up unusual design features. And the next one is the ability to remove one quarter of the balloon's structure and put the balloon back together again and still have a balloon. So this changes the volume of the overall aircraft, something which is pretty unusual. There are only a limited number of balloonists which have ever experimented with this idea and they tend to take a section around the equator of the balloon, make it a parallel tube and then remove that tube, allowing them to have a taller balloon with more volume or a smaller balloon with less volume. 
So I've approached the problem completely differently by making this section detachable. That has a second benefit to it, which is that I can restructure the colour scheme of the balloon just by moving this quarter and attaching it to a different quarter. So this is where things get really unusual uh, with this structure. Four gauls becoming a three gall balloon. As you can see there, there's no tricks. I've laid the fourth section out to the left hand side and we're starting to reinflate the balloon with one of the pieces missing. So as with most experiments, there's an interesting side effect. And that's that the balloon with only three goals ends up with a peak at the top. We can have a look at that from outside as it rocks around in the breeze. We'll take a look from inside and see what it looks like. To the best of my knowledge, this is the first balloon that's ever had that big capability to interchange and reduce its size in this way. Having had so much success up to this point with both the four and the three-go assembly, the Velcro, the changed design of panel structure, and the Super Billow, now it was time to push our luck and see what happened if we reduce the balloon to just two gores. So clearly we're a long way away from the basic design and the balloon really didn't want to perform particularly well in the breeze. Quite an unusual shape that was generated and it tended to collapse around the lower third of the balloon, making it very difficult for myself as the pilot to push myself up inside the balloon and safely fire the burner without torching the whole structure. So this won't be the last time that we see this balloon on the channel. I, my intention is to continue to use this balloon as a test bed for various different projects that I have in mind and I've built some key features into the balloon which I can explain at a later date. If you have any comments that you'd like to leave on how this project has worked out or things which you think we could do in the future feel free drop us a like and subscribe to see more of the experiments coming up in the future.